Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to continue the series on the Queen's Gambit declined with the Vienna variation. Definitely the most unsound and the riskiest way to play the Queen's Gambit, but it's fun and can lead to double-edged sharp positions in which black has great winning chances. And of course, according to the engines and to Grandmaster level theory, so high level theory, it's not a bad opening. It's not unsound. It's just very hard to prove that it is sound or to prove that it's not unsound. If we are talking about this position on the board uh, where black had taken away from the center with d takes c4, this is the Vienna variation. So we can enter the opening several different ways. The most common one is of course via uh, the Queen's Gambit declined move order. So for example d4, d5, c4, e6, the Queen's Gambit declined, knight to c3, Knight to f6, knight to f3, and now d takes c4 uh, is the Vienna variation. Uh, another move order can be from the Ragozin defense, and one variation of the Ragozin is actually known as the Vienna variation, that's the same thing. So bishop to g5, and now d takes c4. The thing is that after this variation, where black, when black plays the Vienna, in the Ragozin, he is restricting white's options, so obviously white has already played bishop to g5, which doesn't necessarily have to be played. But if you start with bishop b4, then of course white doesn't have to play bishop g5, so he can go cd5, stop you from playing the Vienna completely. So the Vienna can be entered via, uh, from the Ragozin, but it's not forced. Another way to enter the Vienna is to simply play uh, from the anti nimzo Indian, so knight to f6, c4, e6, going for the nimzo Indian if knight c3 is played. But after knight f3, you now have the option of playing d5, and after knight to c3, you can play the Ragozin, again, with bishop to b4, or you can play the Vienna, dc. So this is probably even a more common way to enter uh, the Vienna variation than from the Queen's Gambit decline. But this is a good thing to, to know. Maybe if you play the Nimso Indian, you can combine the Vienna in your repertoire to add something sharp and unusual. Uh, and of course, when people play knight to f3 trying to avoid the Nimso, they probably won't know 20 moves of the Ragozin or 20 moves of the Vienna or 20 moves or of something. They will know the Queen's Indian, they will know normal d5 lines, so this may be a good surprise. So let's get into the opening. After d takes c4, uh, the upside of this move is you have taken a pawn. You are going to force white to recapture it. Uh, the downside is you have given up your center and you basically have no control over the center anymore. White is free to play the move e4 uh, at his own leisure and that is in fact the best move and the main, main line. So e4 unopposed. Uh, it's of course defended by the knight. So this move is going to combine some elements of the Semislav defense, first of all. Uh, variations such as the Botvinnik Semislav or the anti-Moscow Semislav when the bishop does come to g5. So for example, let's look at e4, bishop to b4, bishop to g5. Very similar to the Botvinnik Semislav where white has e5 ideas, of course. Uh, White is threatening to regain the pawn, but black can for the moment play the move b5 to defend it because the knight is pinned. Uh, h6 is an idea, bishop takes f6 is an idea, uh, maybe knight e4 is an idea. So, very similar to ideas in the semislav. Then also, uh, there are some similarities to the to the Ragozin and to the Bogo and the Nimzo Indian with the bishop coming to b4 most often, pinning this knight. And then, of course, we are exerting control over e4. And basically, black is playing dynamically for a lead in development and a worse, uh, well, worse structure, uh, less central control. So the move e4 is the main line. It makes perfect sense. The two alternatives are e3, and queen a4 check. Now e3 is almost as popular as e4, it's just a completely different game. Queen a4 is a very very rare sideline and it transposes to a variation of the semislav. I'm going to show you that now. So if queen a4 check, this move is basically designed to win the pawn immediately. There's no better move but c6. Uh, you can try knight c6 or bishop d7, but this is just best. And after queen takes c4, black plays b5. 
this is now the semi-slav defense. I'm going to show you uh, how we normally enter this position. So d5, c4, c6, the slav, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, the semi-slav. And here, uh, as you know, the two most common moves are e3, bishop g5, a sideline is c takes d. But there's a move, queen, take, queen to d3. And after queen to d3, this move has been played a couple of hundred times. So d c4, queen c4, and b5, we have the same position. Uh, that we have reached from the Vienna. So the move b5 it is designed to free up the bishop with tempo. You want to play c5, obviously a6, normal semi-slav plans. So I'm not going to talk about this in the Vienna. If you want to see more about positions like these, uh, watch the playlist on the semi-slav defense. Today we are going to focus on e4, which is the main line, and on the quiet variation. So, <clears throat> uh, several ways uh, several ways for white to play. After e4, uh, we are going to look at the main line first. Bishop to b4, of course, pinning the knight <clears throat> and threatening to take on e4. So here, uh, bishop takes c4 is a move, allowing knight takes e4, but bishop g5 is more common and bishop g5 is simply safer. Okay, and now uh, e5 isn't such a strong threat, so black can afford to play the sharp move c5. Again, very similar to Nimtso Indian positions. You want to break open the center. Since black has been given the move e4, you want to strike at the center now. Because if you give white time, then he's going to consolidate castles, be, castle and be simply better. After c5, bishop takes c4. Uh, let's look at the move e5, which is very sharp, but it, it doesn't win a piece. I'm going to show you how. So bishop takes c4 again is the main line and let's let's just go through this once again. This is the most thematic you can get in the Vienna. So dc4 the Vienna, e4 the main line, bishop b4 pinning the knight, threatening knight e4. And now bishop c4 can be played but bishop g5 is the main line, black plays c5. And now first of all bishop takes c4 is the main line. Bishop takes c4 here is the best move but e5 can be played and now we are going to look at two different moves for white in this position of course this is again very similar to the semi-slav where white plays e4 black, black plays c5 and then we have e f d uh, c d and both sides take knights on c3 and f6 so c takes d4 if you're going to take my piece i'm going to take your piece however uh, neither uh, of the two moves that are good for white here is pawn takes f6 or bishop takes f6. The two moves we are going to look at are a very, very aggressive piece sacrifice for black and the knight takes d4. Knight takes d4 is the normal move and Magnus Carlsen played uh, the black side of this. Uh, Queen a4 has been played as well on the highest levels. So knight takes d4 is the main line, of course, now reinforcing the threat of taking the knight. So we have queen to a5. And now, of course, I'm threatening to win a pawn. And I'm going to, well, regain my material. For the moment, both sides have four pieces. But there's, there's one thing in this position. If you take my knight, well, first of all, if you take with the bishop, I take with the pawn. If you take my knight with the pawn, then I check you. And my queen is attacking your bishop. So tactically, queen a5 saves the day, unpins the knight and attacks the bishop. Of course, if white tries a3, then you just take twice. You're a pawn up. You can move your knight. So the main line continues ef. Bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and simply queen takes g5. And after fg, queen g, and white uh, plays queen to d2, black even castles here. Bishop takes c4 and something like rook to d8. This position is, of course, slightly better for white because he's already developed, has a slightly better pawn structure, but it's not easy. It's not easy because the only problem black has is the c8 bishop. So this is the main line after e5. Now I'm going to show you the sideline. So again, after c5, which is the only good move for black after bishop g5, if white tries e5, you play c takes d4 attacking the knight. One option is knight takes d4, simply removing the attacker. The other option is queen a4 check. And in this line, black is forced to give up a piece. But he gives up a piece for a lot of pawns and he has huge compensation. 
uh, one of the highest rated games uh, in this position was Mam- uh, Mamedyarov versus Luke Van Vili, which Black won. Then Grishchuk Gelfand from 2010, which was a draw. Uh, Luke Van Vili Morozevic, which was a draw. Ivanchuk Nispianu, which was won by Ivanchuk. So a lot of, lot of uh, very strong players have played this. And this line is forced. So in every game, these moves were played after Queen A4 check. So knight to c6, stopping the check, that one is obvious. White castles. White castles because he wants to keep attacking the f6 knight and wants to stop you from taking on c3. Of course, if you take, I take your queen. So now bishop to d7, reinforcing the threat of pawn takes knight. Knight to e4. Now, again, black is the only one who is threatened to, to lose a piece. And here, the best move for black is simply bishop to e7. After bishop to e7, black is of course giving up a piece. e takes f, g takes f, at least getting a pawn for that, bishop to h4, and now rook to c8. And in this position, black gave up a knight, but black has eight pawns. White has five pawns. White's king is castled, but is less safe than black's king. This is a very scary position for white. This is an extremely scary position for white. You have knight discoveries on the queen. You have c3 ideas. You have discoveries on the bishop. Uh, There's a lot going on here. You may even sacrifice a pawn with the immediate b5. So this position is very sharp. In fact, king b1 has been played in almost all of the games. Uh, Bishop takes f6 has been played four times. The idea is that after bishop takes f6, Bishop takes f6, knight to d6, check, you win in exchange. So king to f8, knight c8. Queen c8, you have reduced some of the pressure and basically have an exchange instead of a piece. And for the moment, black has seven pawns, white has five. So you have reduced the material and it's easy to, easier to play. But that's that's not the main move. After rook to c8, the main move is king b1, white trying to hold the material. Knight a5 is in fact the, the best move here and the... Uh, and the main line after which queen to c2 is played, then e5. And there are still uh, there are still 46 games from this position. This is high, high, high level theory for another 10 moves. So very sharp. So remember, after e4, which is the main line, bishop to b4, bishop to g5, black has to play c5. White can play bishop takes c4. We are going to go over that now. That's the main move. But white can also go e5. And now things get tricky. You have to play cd4 as black. And now white gets to choose between knight d4 and queen a4. Queen a4 is the piece sacrifice we just looked at. Knight takes d4 is slightly less complicated. It leaves your queen on g7 and it's an almost equal position. So e5 is sharp, but black does well in both lines. Now let's look at bishop takes c4. That's a bit more normal. Uh, c takes d4 again is the move you want to play. That's what makes the Vienna kind of easy. You always play c takes d4. Knight takes d4 by white. And now bishop takes c3 check. B takes c3, queen to a5. You have uh, unpinned. Of course, black can uh, ruin, get his pawn structure ruined with bishop takes f6. But that shouldn't be too devastating. Of course, in this position, the bishop is attacked. So white has to do something if he castles. Black plays bishop takes g5. Uh, So there are two options here. Either bishop b5 check or bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6 is a sideline. So let's look at that first. After this, it's obvious that queen takes c3 can be played as an intermezzo. And after king to f1. I'm sorry. For some reason... Uh, some notifications on my phone have sound. Okay, I'm sorry. So king f1, g takes f6. Uh, this position, six pawns for black, five pawns for white. But after rook c1, queen a5, h4. Uh, it's not easy to be black here. And positions continue like this. This is very, 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 very sharp. And white is going to regain the pawn. Uh, there is almost no way to, for black to hold on to both uh, h7 and a7, it's very hard, and also c6 is weak. But basically this position should be equal. Black has a worse pawn structure. For the moment it's an extra pawn, but as I said, that pawn is going to drop. Black has a less safe king. 
uh, and yeah, worst pieces. Obviously, white's bishop is better, white's rook is better, white's queen is better. So more than enough compensation for the pawn. Having said that, uh, bishop takes f6 is a sideline for a reason because it leaves black a fairly easy to play position. Bishop b5 is sharper. Bishop b5 is better. Bishop to d7. Uh, and now bishop takes f6. G takes f6. Queen to b3 is a way more active continuation because you've now included your queen. You've stopped queen takes c3. And you basically uh, don't allow the same lines as before. So let's just look at one thing. Bishop to d7. Uh, bishop takes f6. Why not queen c3 here? Uh, if you take on c3 here, then king f1, uh, g takes f6, and rook to c1 is a bit harder to meet, and you would have to... Wait, I don't know what the... Okay, yeah, white is winning here. Okay, the queen is trapped. That was it. I'm sorry, I just couldn't remember. I didn't have the line prepared. So in the same line, this now with the bishop here actually uh, traps, traps the queen. There's no escape. Okay, what about queen here? Let me just check. Aha, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the idea. I'm sorry. I should have prepared the sideline as well. So anyway, uh, in this line, after bishop to d7, uh, when the bishop is pinned, rook to c1 is deadly, so you cannot take on c3. So bishop takes f6, g takes f6, you don't have time for queen c3, and queen to b3. And now a6, chasing the bishop away, and knight to c6, white castles, queen to c7, you can see that uh, white has a much easier game. This is now equal material, six pawns each. Uh, white doesn't have an ideal pawn structure, of course, there's a pawn on c3, pawn on a2. But the black king, after something like f4, e5, or f4, f5, or something like g4, g5, believe me, that's possible, uh, could be in dire straits. And it's just much, much easier to play white here. Rook a to b1, attacking the b7 pawn, knight a5 defending, queen to a3. You can see that the queen is already looking at these very, very weak dark squares. Rook to c8, rook f to d1, normal development. Queen to c5 is the main move. Uh, for black, if he takes on c3 here, then queen to d6 is a very dangerous infiltration, and after queen c7, something like knight f5 is possible. And after, if e takes f5, then queen takes f6 is actually scary. So the main move is queen to a3. Uh, so yeah, the silent is queen to f uh, a3. Knight f5 should not be taken. That's That's very, very scary. So... So yeah, uh, sharp positions in which white is supposed to be slightly better. If you look at rook f to d1, queen to c5, as I said, should be the best move. Queen to c1, white wants to avoid the queen exchange, rook to g8, g3. Black has the open g-file to work with, so there's some compensation there, but I still think it's easier to play white. So this is the main line of e4. Now, if you want to get crazy, go crazy with white, instead of bishop takes c4, choose the move e5. This is basically where you get to choose how to fight the Vienna. And players with black, be prepared for all three. So the first option is bishop takes c4. The second option is e5 with knight d4 on the next move. And the third option is e5 with queen a4 check, when you have to give up a piece. Okay, now let's look at the quiet lines. Uh, e3 instead of e4, the quiet variation. c5 or, X or a6 are possible here. Uh, both are okay. A6 is by far the more popular move. C5 has, has the same idea. You are going to follow up with A6. So A6. Uh, here, white has a big choice to make. He can either stop B5 or he can allow B5. Obviously, B5 is the idea here. So if he stops B5 with A4, he is not regaining the pawn immediately. If he takes the pawn, he allows B5. Uh, I think it's much better to just play a4. They're just, they're equally popular. Both moves have around 800 games. If you play bishop takes c4, 
then b5, bishop d3, bishop b7, castle c5, gives black a very natural semi-slav position in which he has managed to open up the bishop. And this is basically a semi-slav with no issues for black. The reason for that, the reason for black being equal, even though he hasn't played bishop e7 castles yet, is that white has this bad bishop, so he's going to waste, have to waste time on e4. While this, so, for, for example, rook e1, bishop e7, e4, castles. Perfectly fine position for black, and I've played the semi-slav a lot, so I'm very comfortable with this. So if I'm white against a6 in the quiet uh, Vienna, I'm never playing bishop takes c4, because I just find black very good in those positions. So instead of bishop takes c4, go a4. Semislav players hate a4, and I bet that Vienna players hate it too, because it's not easy to develop. You now don't have bishop b7, which means that you either have to play c5, bishop d7, bishop c6 to develop your bishop, or b6, uh, bishop to b7, or e5. I'm not saying that it's going to be impossible to play c5, for example, but after a4 you don't have b5. makes stuff a bit more complicated. So, the way for black to play this position, and in fact the only way to, to try to fight for equality and for activity on the queen side, is to go c5 immediately. Every other move is too slow. And white simply recaptures the pawn now that b5 is not a threat. Uh, black continues with knight c6, we have castles, bishop to e7, queen to e2, and now the move c takes d4, striking at the center. Uh, you don't want to take because that would uh, leave you with an IQP too early on, you can interpose rook to d1, pinning the pawn. And now this may seem strange, giving uh, black the option to play e5, but e takes d4, e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and queen to e5 is very good, because uh, of course the, uh, the, the rook is pinned. Or, I'm sorry, the knight is pinned. If you go knight f3, I can just take it because my knight defends the rook. So, you basically have to, uh, after queen to e5, play something like queen to d6, offer a queen trade. Now you can either take on d6 or take on d4. Same thing, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, bishop c5. Unfortunately for any spectators of such a game, a game with equal material and a symmetrical pawn structure, which on the high level means a draw, on our level, uh, it's playable, of course, and anything could happen. After queen d6, the main move, though, is queen takes d6, bishop takes d6, rook takes d4, bishop c5. We reach the same position. Extremely boring, and unfortunately, should end in a draw. A slight imbalance, but not enough, definitely. Bishop versus knight. Which piece is better here could be debated. Uh, I'd prefer to play with a knight, so I would like to have white here, even though there are pawns on both sides of the board. Because if I could get my knight to, to c4 and get my pawn to b3, get my rook to d7, put everything on light squares, uh, and leave the black bishop without any targets, with both rooks on the board, I think I should be better. If the rooks are traded off, then probably the bishop should be better than the knight. In any case, uh, 94 is the main move here. More than 80% of the games end in a draw, so... Okay, so coming back to the original position, uh, after d takes c4, the Vienna, white is basically able to choose whether he wants to play e4 and enter sharp positions where black could be in trouble if he doesn't know theory, or white could play the move e3 and invite black to a calm, nice tea party of a game where neither side is really playing for anything great. So your choice. The Vienna, if white plays e4, is extremely scary, very risky, and very dangerous, but if you know what you're doing, well, great grandmasters have proven that the Vienna is a very sharp and very sound weapon indeed. A great way to play the Queen's Gambit declined if you got the nerves for that. Okay, uh, thanks everybody, thanks for watching, let me know what you think about the video, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye!